Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and begin. I think uh, people are still joining in from either lunch breaks or things that they had to do, but I think throughout the, throughout the time people start to trickle in. But once again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Today's community health webinar is recorded, so I'll be sending out the link in an email afterwards for the YouTube recording. Um, and I want to thank Well for Culture. I want to thank Thosh and Chelsea for joining us today, taking time out of the day to present Well for Culture. But Well for Culture, through research, photographs, videos, and stories, Well for Culture seeks to teach and promote healthy lifestyles, ancestral eating, indigenized fitness methods, mental and spiritual connectedness, understanding that strong tribe. Tribal nations are built by strong individuals. They encourage wellness as a method of sustaining, rebuilding, and strengthening their communities. And they also acknowledge the healing power and wisdom of ancestral teachings and apply these to modern world. So at this time, I'd like to introduce um, Chelsea and Thosh. And if you can, maybe just uh, introduce yourselves and uh, you can go ahead and share your screen whenever you're ready. Also, I'd like for everyone that is tuning in to go ahead and mute your speakers, and also we'll be sending out a, um, an evaluation survey to fill out. So sometime during the presentation, you can go ahead and click on, click on that and uh, go ahead and fill it and send it in. All right, thank you, and go ahead, Thosh and Chelsea. All right, thanks Eugene, we appreciate that introduction. Hello everybody, it's good to see you all. Um, thanks everybody for, for joining us today. We're excited to get this discussion going. Um, feel free to ask any questions over the chat forum at any time and we'll try to address those along the way. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Chelsea Luger and I originally am from the Great Plains. Also, I grew up in um, North Dakota, from the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe on my dad's side from Fort Yates. And I'm also from the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa on my mom's side of the family, um, which is where I'm enrolled. And I now live and work here from uh, where we are in Scottsdale, Arizona, just near the Salt River Reservation, uh, which is where Osh is from, and I'll let him introduce himself. Well, hello everyone. I'm glad to be a part of this here. Uh, thank you again to the board for having us. We're really honored and, and um, that we're able to be a part of this, this, this work that you all are doing. And we're just, we're just grateful that people trust our vision to share what little we know in this area of health and wellness. And um, we're just very grateful for that. And thank you all for doing the work that you do in your communities or whatever it is that you do. And we are always sending our prayers and good thoughts out to people that are working with uh, our, our people in this area of, of health and wellness. You know that it's uh, sometimes very hard work. So we hope that that um, you'll continue to take care of yourself as well so we can continue to take care of the people. And so my name is Tosh. I'm from the Salt River people, the Ankakamiratam. We're also known as Pima, but we call ourselves the River people. And we're located just right outside of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, right now we just live right down the street. Our reservation is boarded up with the city. And so Chelsea and I just live down the street in our little place here um, from where I grew up. And I'm also a board member of the Native Wellness Institute, a nonprofit that's based out of Portland, Oregon, who does area work in the area of, 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 of Native wellness and, and healing and addressing historical trauma. And so our Well for Culture initiative is also a part of that greater wellness movement. And ours is more focused on this area of, of bringing back ancestral foods and, and movement uh, to, to our daily regimen, and including that in our wellness journey and understanding how even historical trauma has impacted our health in that way. So uh, we're associated with the Native Wellness Institute, and um, we, we do work within that, that, that realm as well. Um, I also do photography as well. Right here in my community, I do a lot of other work with the 
behavioral health services, the health and human services. Uh, so there's a lot of work being done locally. We, 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 we are into over here as well. So uh, that's just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm going to share about going to the history of starting an initiative. Oh, yeah, sure. So we started the Welfare Culture Initiative a couple years ago. Um, maybe started the idea in about 2013. And from there, the first thing that we did is we built a website, um, which is still available now. We're, we're, we're always trying to update it. Um, Wellforculture.com. If you guys ever need a resource that has stuff about ancestral foods, earth gym, um, inner tribal fitness meetups, all of these things that we're going to get into in our presentation here. But everything on our website is free and, and shareable with the public. So we encourage you to check out our website. We also have recipes on there. Our recipe section, I think, is the most popular part of our website. If you want creative ideas on what to make using ancestral foods, um, an indigenized diet, as we call it, um, feel free to check that out at any time. So, um, so what Welfare Culture is, again, it's just, it's a movement. We're not um, a nonprofit organization. We're not a business. We are just um, a couple of people that like to share ideas amongst ourselves and, and many different tribal nations all over the place. We exchange ideas about health and wellness and bringing a lot of our, um, our, our traditional or historical knowledge in with a lot of Western science and medical knowledge and contemporary knowledge from the indigenous world as well. So we meld all of these things together and we share them in kind of fun and exciting ways using a lot of photography and videography. And, um, and so it's a movement and it's something that even just um, as you all are participating in this webinar, you're part of the welfare culture movement. And we're so happy and grateful for that. And, um, we, we always learn a lot on the way as we go and, and we work with different tribes and, and different organizations like your own. Um, and so we also think a lot about incorporating our, our values as Native people, incorporating our, our values in, in terms of our health. And oftentimes, as many of you probably see, when we're dealing with health in our communities, rarely do people take into account or consideration the original foods of our people. And it's happening more and more now, and that's a good thing to see. Um, also, one thing that we never see as much is we never see people that incorporating our indigenous games or our philosophy to, to, to health. And uh, usually in these areas when we're dealing with uh, language preservation or tribal sovereignty, the, 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 the discussion about improving and reclaiming our health rarely comes up. So that's really what we want to convey with this initiative is to encourage people once again to be inclusive of the original foods, be inclusive of the language and start talking about our health, start talking about movement in our languages once again, and be inclusive of the original movement modalities that our people did. Over here in the Southwest, we were big runners. In the Northwest, they were, they were really big into canoe culture, as well as even in the Plains, they were also runners as well, in parts of the Northern Plains as well, as well as the horse culture and, and other types of game. Even things like, like archery, uh, looking at stickball, double ball, lacrosse, um, the women's games that we have over here, and being inclusive of those and, and, and starting to reach into our, our tools as Native people and bringing these things into this discussion and, and practice of, of health. And so that's some of the, the stuff that we're, we're working on in Salt River here is, is trying to get the Health and Human Services Department to, to bring in resources from within the community to incorporate these kinds of practices into it. So, so that way we're not just steering people out of the community and into the hands of, of, of solely Western doctors, um, you know, approach that we need that, but we also need our own value systems and we need our original food and our own philosophy towards health. So um, that's a big part of, of, of our initiative as well. And so we'll jump into it right here. We're going to share our screen and we have some slides. We're going to go down and, and share some slides and uh, share some videos. Hopefully the videos actually um, carry over and transfer well. Let's see. He's in the share screen button. Yeah, but I'm just wanting to pull it up. And let's see. Hey, where do you go?
I see. Excuse us. Hmm. There it goes. So right here, um, you're seeing a slide, right? Give me a thumbs up if you're seeing the slide. Good. Um, and so again, uh, as it said before, welfare culture is, is about healthy bodies and minds are necessary components for sustaining our cultures and communities. So once again, it's also bringing into to the, to the discussion that health is also is about protecting us, of course, as, as individuals, but protecting ourselves and reclaiming our health in order to take care of our families and to take care of our communities, to strengthen our sovereignty and, and reclaim our health. So we look at it from the big picture too. And that's very much an indigenous teaching that many of our different nations have is we take care of ourselves and then our family first before we go outward. And also it's based on that fundamental teaching that strong communities are built by strong families. And so I think it's important for us once again to look at health it is, is something in that matter as opposed to dominant society's usual, uh, you know, reasons for exercising, which is a lot of times it's cosmetic, you know, or looking a certain way. And so it's reclaiming help for ourselves, our families, and our communities. So there are many different components to the, the welfare culture movement or elements of this, of this idea, these concepts. And it's all surrounded uh, um, around the concept of sustaining um, our cultures and our communities. So you'll see all these different categories here that are interconnected. When we talk about wellness, it's not just, again, fitness or healthy eating or um, kind of those simple categories that, let's say, the American fitness movement puts onto it. It's about so much more than that. Um, it involves our cultures, it involves our history, it involves our communities and our system of values. And when we bring those ideas into the conversation, more people are, are, are more likely to get more excited about wellness. It's all about drawing people in and making everybody feel included in the wellness conversation, no matter their age, no matter their athletic ability, no matter where they come from. And I'd like to also note that this idea of, um, you know, indigenized wellness is something that can benefit anybody from any walk of life. It's not just something for indigenous people. Our teachings as native people in general are phenomenal and are so dynamic and so well-rounded and holistic that really these teachings are applicable to everybody no matter what culture they come from. And that's something that as Native people we, we have um, to be proud of that and to utilize that. So all of these interconnected concepts. Um, so wellness is about, we'll start, start in the top center, it's partially about sobriety. Um, having a, a clear mind and a clear head and being able to approach the wellness conversation um, with, a, with a sound mind and a sound heart has always been important for our people and we believe that that's important for our people today too. So that's a part of it. And then if you want to keep going, go through these really quickly. Also looking to our left here, mental stimulation that includes an education both in the Western sense and in the indigenous sense. And that indigenous worldview also stimulates intellectualism. I'm moving into things like life connection here, connection to, to, to the community, connection to one another, connection to Mother Earth, connection to our family, and connection to our great spirit, whatever that may be for you in your own way. And of course, getting into movement. Uh, as we said before, movement and ancestral foods are, are big components of, of, of a welfare culture initiative, but there are all these other components that are ju just as important. And when we talk about movement, the reason why we use that term movement is because what that does is that it automatically includes all different types of other modalities of movement and in, in fitness, such as things like uh, yoga, combat sports, running, biking, hiking, taking a swift walk, uh, calisthenics, um, weight training, uh, Olympic training, any of that. And then, of course, dance as well. And so when we talk about movement, because sometimes when we talk about fitness or you say workout, it kind of intimidates some people sometimes, right? Some people get intimidated by that. 
that idea of working out or going to a gym. And so that's why we like to use the term movement because it encompasses this, this really broad range of, of different modalities. And, um, and, and we, we also like to share a little bit of the science that comes behind movement, such as things like stimulating neurogenesis, which is the production of new brain cells uh, in the mind, which is really important for not only developing brains in children, but also for old age. For people in old age, they say that the more you move, especially when you learn new movements, when you learn new things, you're creating new brain cells that actually strengthen your mind and into old age. So they say that it's, 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 it's also about fortifying what you have there and strengthening it because as you know, as, 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 as old age happens, um, the, the cognitive performance slows down. So the new science is saying that the more you move, the more that you stimulate neurogenesis, you're protecting that, your mental faculties, which I think is really important for us as Native people, especially in the area of language preservation and increasing our indigenous worldview. Um, and of course, movement is, is healing in the sense that not only are we you know, burning body fat and, and strengthening our cardiovascular system or strengthening muscles or strengthening bones, but what we are also doing is we're stimulating all the feel-good neurotransmitters to be secreted from the different glands into our nervous system, which is really helpful for stress reduction, reducing that stress, order, uh, stress hormone cortisol. It's, it's really beneficial for that. So that's why we always encourage people who are on the sobriety journey to, to get moving, to get out and find some kind of modality uh, um, of movement that makes you happy, that helps keep your your stress down and it becomes a healthy mechanism. It's a help, healthy coping mechanism. I, for myself, if I don't move or do it, if I don't sweat, if I don't move, then I, I find myself becoming a little bit more stressed and I find myself more irritable. And that's really because the human brain and the human body thrives on movement, very much thrives on movement. And mm -hmm. again, bringing it back to our ancestors, looking at how active they were, that's proof as well. Our old tradition and the way of life passed down from generation to generation is enough proof for us. So really the science is just, it's, it's barely catching up to what our people have been doing for a long time. Yes, we always say that movement is medicine and that's one of our favorite expressions because it's absolutely true. Movement has the ability to pull us up out of a depression or out of feeling anxious. Movement has the ability to release those endorphins in our brain and, and make us feel good. And even if we're not athletes, um, as community with one another, it's important to, um, for us to have help others access some type of movement that they enjoy, even if they're not an athlete. So movement is medicine. We can't um, enforce that enough. Uh, moving on to our next concept, indigenous languages. This is um, often not necessarily tied in with the wellness conversation, although it is very, very relevant. Um, our languages are healing to us. Our languages have so much in them that unfortunately through the processes of colonialism, we've lost quite a bit of that knowledge and, and um, of, of, of that joy that comes with having our, our languages being spoken on a daily basis. So what we can do as, as people who are in the wellness world is we can incorporate indigenous languages as much as possible into our workshops or into our workouts or whatever it is that we're doing that day. So learning how to say sobriety or fitness or pull-ups or push-ups <laughs> and learning those words in our indigenous languages and then teaching them when we go out and teach wellness or having posters on the wall that show um, different wellness concepts but in the language, like different foods or different exercises. Um, always incorporating the language whenever we can. Um, counting off exercises, yep. counting in your indigenous language, waji, numpa, yamini, as you do squats or as you do push-ups or whatever it may be. Um, always incorporating that indigenous language when you can and seeing how quickly the little ones will pick up on learning mm -hmm. the words if they're doing it with an exercise involved. So it's just like, again, another component of our holistic wellness. That's something I do all the time when I'm exercising is I'm counting my reps in the language and now the, the counting just comes automatic. And I think that our brains as native people should do that. We should automatically think, well, well how do we say it in the language? And so anytime it comes well, time for me to count anything throughout the day, I'm just, I find myself automatically just counting in the language and thinking about things in the language. So 
Bringing in our language is so important. We're bridging the gaps between language preservation, cultural preservation, revitalization, and health. And bringing on, so the next one, moving over to the right, right here we have the ancestral food. And we know that ancestral food is, it's, it's not only nutrient dense, but it's something that's cultural for us. There's gatherings, there's harvest ceremonies, uh, there's giving of thanks, there's, there's long speeches of giving of thanks reciting. And we know that also that ancestral food is naturally gluten free and gluten was not a part of our diets prior to the arrival of Europeans. It's also naturally low, lower in, in sugar and fructose, the natural sugar. A lot of our foods are lower in this, so they're automatically lower for the lower on the glycemic index. Many of our foods don't cause blood sugar spikes, insulin spikes, and most of our, our foods, especially the foods that are harvested and that are high fiber, are high in the gut micro, uh, high for for gut microbiome. So they have that good bacteria in it. It supports immunity promotes positive DNA expression and of course reduces our risk for disease. So we always try to share that ancestral food is more than just nutrient density. There's so much to it. There's a spiritual connection to it. It connects us to the land and it connects us to one another in community. And it's there's that positive economical aspect of it as well, whereas that we are strengthening tribal food sovereignty. Mm -hmm. which means that we are reducing the, um, the, the, the participation of going out and supporting these industrial food companies like Kroger or Nestle, companies that leave a large eco footprint. Monsanto. Monsanto, yep. These companies that are leaving a large eco footprint on our mother earth. So also ancestral eating and preparing our food and getting in hunting and fishing and, and, and gardening and farming harvesting wild foods is there's a major political economical component to it as well. And I think that as native people that we, it's, it's in our way to think holistically about these things. So we can never really just zero in and focus on one area. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, going over to sleep. Um, we just can't emphasize enough how important sleep is to overall wellness. And I know that we all go through periods in life where we're really busy, especially as teens or in our um, early 20s, or maybe if we're new mothers or um, different situations in life that cause us to lose sleep or to not have a lot of sleep, but to try to prioritize that as much as we can. And especially to encourage like our community members who may be in college, college students who tend to like pull all nighters and stuff like that. Um, sleep is really important for us and it, it, it uh, contributes to having what we call a healthy circadian rhythm, so just a, health, a healthy pattern in your day-to-day -day life. Um, it contributes to fat burning, muscle building, um, and, and rejuvenating, giving your, your mind and your body that opportunity to rejuvenate um, while you're in the dream state. And then finally, um, going up to the top right, new life experience, uh, whether it's travel or whether it's a cultural activity or learning a new song, learning your indigenous language or dance, um, learning your creation stories, all these different things are what we are going to encounter on the wellness journey. I think many of us have that experience of, you know, um, you know, I know when I was younger, I was a drinker and a partier and um, uh, definitely wasn't concerned with wellness at all, except for in those moments where I was at ceremony or except for in those moments where I was playing sports or whatever it was that I was doing. But when you bring wellness into every component of your day-to-day -day life, then you're going to encounter all of these new and wonderful experiences. It just comes with the territory. The energy that you put out is the energy that comes back to you. Our people have always known that and understood that. And so sharing this idea with those who are interested in, in being more on the wellness journey or on the sober journey or whatever it may be is important. So again, it's, it's in our best interest, I think, as Native people to be inclusive of, of many different elements as we can when it comes to talking about our overall wellness, when it comes to talking about our reason for physically being active, our reasons for eating real food. It's, there's so many of these components and elements associated with it. And I think as Native people, that we definitely have an edge in this area of wellness. And it's not a competition between us and our non-native counterparts, but we have an edge in the sense that we have a, a good grasp of, of what wellness is as native people because it's in our original practice. It's in our original ways of life. 
Uh, where we come from over here in the Salt River, we say Himaduk, which means to like walk from the heart and all the teachings associated with that. And every indigenous nation has their version of that. And I think if we really look at that, you see all of these elements that are in there. So we will have this little pictograph put up on our site soon, and we will have it as something that you can download so you can use it as a reference when you work. We hope, we hope that it interests you and that it, it comes in um, handy in some way, so we'll have that up. And we're gonna, we're gonna jump on over really quickly. We have some other areas right here, such as our ancestral foods medicine wheel, and we've thrown together just, just a, a, a few different types of indigenous foods and non-indigenous foods that are good and real broken it down between vitamins and minerals, complex carbohydrates, healthy fats and oils, proteins, plant proteins, and fibers. And as you see on here, there's nowhere that we include uh, grains and dairy. And we, we still see that there's a lot of grains and dairy and whole wheat being promoted. But the grains and the whole wheat are, are high in, 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 in the sugar. They cause a high spike in blood sugar. They are a kind of simple carbohydrate, a, a, a simple carb. Um, and if you look at the, the on the glycemic index, that two slices of whole wheat bread is equivalent to a can of soda. And so you still have a lot of dietitians telling Native people it's okay to, to have bread, it's okay to have these grains or, or oatmeal and things like that. But I think that our people should be aware and start really looking at um, how to swap those things out. And so looking at things even like sprouted grain bread doesn't have gluten in it. It's a different type of, it's not wheat, it's not a, it's not a type of uh, a wheat as well. And even looking at uh, adopting things like Ojibwe wild rice because it, it's a nice starchy and hearty kind of food, but it's it's still a, a complex carbohydrate and it does doesn't cause the spikes in the, in the blood glucose and it's a healthy fiber. So I think we start exploring things like this as well as uh, the sweet potatoes and the other wild tubulars that we find around native country that yeah. might be a, a healthier carb. Yeah, a big question that we get a lot because of the fact that bread is so ubiquitous in the American diet today, including on the res, including amongst Native people, we're so used to eating bread now, even though it's only been 150 years that we've had it in our systems at all. People say, well, how do I live without my bread? What do you have instead of bread? And so like Gosh said, just like those starchier, um, heavier vegetables will be a good replacement for that. Even a white potato is better than a bread, although it still spikes your, your sugar. Um, a sweet potato is a better option, has a lot of nutrients. Um, it's filling, it, it, it has that hearty quality to it. You can make it in so many different ways. Um, uh, squash ha has that quality, or Jibwe wild rice, as he mentioned, or even other types of rice are, are, are okay um, to a certain degree. Um, there's a lot of oh, tortillas, like a natural corn tortilla yeah, is corn. a lifesaver for sure if you're trying to get away from bread products because remember that that bread spikes your sugar way, way, way up there and it's just not good for us. So, um, And we also see that there's still a lot of, um, uh, of, of information being put out there that, that fats are, are bad and that there's not enough information right now um, in native country floating around talking about the healthy fats. But if you look at what uh, the diet consisted of a lot of our peoples, a lot of our people ate fish, they, they ate wild game meats, and, uh, and that was high in omega-3 fatty acids. So today most people get the omega uh, fatty acid of, 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 of six. So omega-6 fatty acids, which that one's the one that's associated with all the different types of diseases, which a lot of those fatty acids come from um, seed oils like western oil, corn oil, a lot of these things that's being used a lot and, and to, to, cook, to cook food in, those are high in omega-6s. And back in the day, the ratio was, was more one to one. Now they say it's more of like five to one with omega-6 being the higher end. So I think people should, need, should start doing some, some more of their own research and learning about what healthy fats are doing for our system, such as the healthy fats found in um, olive oil, uh, uh, avocados, um, wild game fish, wild catch fish, excuse me, like such as salmon and, and walleye, and even looking at the grass-fed bison, grass-fed beef, and of course uh, deer and elk and other types of animals that are, are out foraging, eating their original diet. Their, their, their meat has the healthier fat, the omega-3. Also whole eggs have that as well. 
There's also been a lot of science that debunks that cholesterol is it's built up by, by whole eggs. It's not. Your liver actually manufactures more cholesterol than you can ingest. There's a lot of that's coming out as well, too. And so I think that our people should start understanding once again that, hey, original diet had a lot of high fat in it, especially for the coastal people, people that were coastal or lived largely off of fish. Um, the diet was really high in these healthy fats, the omega-3 fatty acids. It had vitamins in there such as uh, DHA and EPA. That's great for brain production. That's great for developing minds as well. And so there, So I think that the, the term fat needs, is also very general because you, you're referring to the fat on the body, the white adipose tissue, and then there's good fat like in avocados and things. So um, we like to really uh, encourage and promote people to look at those healthy fats as well as uh, all of the, the, the healthy fibers and, and all of the, the greens and things like that and minimizing our, our protein intake, especially if it's from uh, farm-fed animals. Um, yeah, and then, of course, it goes without saying, um, I, we don't even get so far into it because it's just common knowledge at this point, but just staying away from all the junk foods and the processed foods as much as possible is really important, really critical. And again, going back to what we talked before, it's not only impacting the way that we look or our physical selves. It's not just impacting, oh, we might gain weight. It's impacting our ability to think clearly and to think properly. It's impacting the, the behavior patterns of our children. It's impacting all of these different things, um, whether or not we can sleep at night, whether or not we feel depressed that day. It all has to do with the food that we're eating and the way that we're moving. So it's so much more than just about looks or just about whatever the, the mainstream fitness mm -hmm. movement tells you it's about. So we're gonna skip a couple of things right here. We're gonna jump into something that we like to call an intertribal fitness meetup. And we like to do these um, because what they do is, is right here like on our slide, it improves the sense of community. Also allows us to connect with like-minded people and exchange ideas, have peer support, and it's family oriented. So usually what, what happens is we use social media and we put a word out and we say, hey, we're gonna be, excuse me, at this such and such location and we're gonna be doing a um, intertribal fitness meetup, a group meetup, and we're gonna be having a, a, a quick circle and everyone gets a chance to introduce themselves and say something that they wanna get out of the gathering, honor the land, honor each other and whoever originally inhabited the land, and pick any kind of modality of movement. And so there's a protocol with it here. It's, it's picking, choosing a modality of movement. And for example, like I said earlier, movement couldn't tell anything. It could be whatever you want. And we just put an example down here of say like yoga or group running or doing something like powwow sweat or doing a group strength training session uh, using hiking or biking and or doing an earth gym session where you utilize the earth as your gym, getting out into the mountains or getting out into the the field or the desert or along the river or the ocean or wherever you have whatever kind of land you have access to mm -hmm. and making it a group thing promoting it making a facebook page and say hey we're going to be here at 6 p.m it's going to go from 6 p.m to 7 30 we're going to do a really quick intro circle we're going to do a group dynamic warm-up then we're going to we're going to do a group circuit and then we're going to do a group cool down stretch and end right there and i think this is a good way to also you know, to, 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 to uh, in, 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 uh, excuse me, to uh, encourage ourselves. We know that we're, we're much more impactful when we're in the presence of other people and we're very social beings. So that's what inner tribal fitness meetup is about. So you can have any kind of modality in movement. You can put it, you can start the a Facebook group page and say, Hey, we're going to have group biking. Hey, we're going to have group yoga. We're going to have group running. We're all going to meet over here at this gym and we're all going to do some strength training together. Whatever it is that works for you. But you can use this, this, this format right here. You can use that here and moving on down right here to um, part of the protocol. And as I said, what we always do is we always, if we're out on the land, we always take a moment to, to, to greet everyone and say, hey, thanks everyone for showing up. I wanted to honor who's uh, the original uh, uh, land we're on and, and, and the people there. Like we did with this group in the picture in the background was over here in Arizona at a park just down the way and I hosted it and just briefly mentioned to everyone that originally this was the the land that people inhabited were the, the Salt River people. And just, just shared a little bit about, you know, some history 
and because some of the people were all natives from other parts of the country and it, it was really good to to see them come out a lot of them were students that came out from arizona state university and you give uh, everyone a, a moment to quickly go around the circle and you can say your name say whatever nation or tribe you're from and say whatever it is that you want to get out of it um, or, share, or share one thing that you're grateful for and we keep it brief and just get around a circle so we can get into our workout. Mm -hmm. So right here is another one right here, our part of our protocol, honoring one another, going on the circle as I mentioned, express something you're thankful for and ask all participants to consider their intention and purpose for being there. And throughout the workout, remind them to move with their intention in mind. Mm -hmm. So again, an example of an intention would be, well, um, I'm here today because I have a grandparent who can't move or who can't walk. And so I want to move and I want to walk for them. Um, that could be your intention. Maybe your other intention is, well, I'm, I just went to the doctor and found out that I'm pre-diabetic. And so I want to move more so that I can prevent myself from getting this illness. So my intention is to heal myself from within through movement. Um, so think of an intention and to move with your intention and to remind the participants to do so. It makes it, it takes it deeper. It takes it on the next level beyond just, oh, we're working out. Now it takes it to, okay, we're building community. We're, we're healing ourselves from within. And this is a good time as well, especially if everyone is from the same indigenous nation to bring in the, the, the language, utilize the language as much as you can throughout the session, whether it be counting your repetitions or talking about doing squats in the language or lunging or some type of hold or some type of pushing or pulling exercise or, or run or whatever it is. Or maybe there is a specific indigenous game that you want to, to, to have the fitness meetup to be based around and you can incorporate that. Or if it is an intertribal, if everyone has some different nations, then you can pass it around and have everyone, okay, who wants to count next? They're going to count the reps of this amount of body weight squats we're going to do. It's a good opportunity to, to do that when we have these type of um, fitness meetups right here. And another thing, component to it is that these could, could, could be easily grassroots, and sometimes we don't need the funds to do it. All we need is social media and a little bit of a platform and encourage people to post it, encourage, encourage people to share about it and personally reach out to people and say, Hey, um, you know, uh, can you share this? Or I really want you to be here as well. Mm -hmm. next slide? Um, that's pretty much it with that. We, we can go back to, um, stop share. Okay. That's, yeah. Questions? Just have a message here. Yeah. Does anybody have questions or? Once again, thank you, Chelsea and Sash, for that presentation on uh, Well for Culture and all the work that you guys have put into developing this for not only tribal communities, but on more of a dynamic and holistic kind of approach for everyone. So I want to thank you for that. And also at this time, I'd like to open it up for any questions that anyone would, anyone has. Oh, recipes, somebody asked, you want to go to the website? Yeah, so, yeah, we have a lot of recipes on our website. We actually, um, there are so many more that we could be adding. It's hard to get around to it, but um, we have here on the wellforculture.com slash recipes, you'll find a list of what we call contemporary indigenous recipes. And what these are is a mix of ancestral foods, so foods that we've always had, and then foods that we can find in the grocery store today that are congruent with um, what we consider a, a, a healthy uh, choice. So um, here our friend contributed from Iroquois territory a white corn and berry dessert. Um, so we have everything from desserts to breakfast to here's a salad that we put together. Um, using our foods like our berries, our traditional indigenous foods, and um, whatever greens you may have on hand. And take these recipes more as a template and a guideline as opposed to a strictly followed recipe. Every single recipe that we have here, you can replace. Like for example, you don't have to use elk if you don't have any on hand. You could use 
a higher grade ground beef, if you can find a grass fed ground beef, that would work just fine. Or if you have bison meat, that would work just fine. Um, if you don't have wild rice, monoman means wild rice. If you don't have that on you, you could use something else to thicken the, the meatball, um, some kind of um, different kind of rice maybe. or That's low carb. It's not a high starch. Right. And so we actually uh, made about 60 or 70 of these once, uh, actually when we were just over there in Oneida Nation, about a month ago and we did a presentation and they said, okay, we want to feed people. Let's take a recipe. So we, we had these, um, uh, Manuman elk meatballs, but we used their, their, their grass fed bison that they have from their market. I don't know if it's sharing. Can you guys see this the elk, uh, recipe screen right now? Yep. Oh, okay. So it's working. So, yeah. So, so these didn't take long for us to make, to, to, to make them and it doesn't take very long at all. And these are, these are a good side. Like if you got a big plate of greens and you have these on the side there, these are great for like, like, um, I guess like an indigenous hors d'oeuvre type thing, you know, and like a finger food. And, um, we just speckled the pumpkin seeds on them, but you can use different things. So, we have that and as, as well as another one, like a wild rice porridge type of thing using like coconut milk. But again, like Chelsea said, these can be a template. You can swap out ingredients or leave things out. You can make di different versions of this kind of stuff. And that's why um, we're, we're more about variations of... Show the top. We're more about variations rather than just rigid pro, uh, 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 recipes because, uh, you know, I think... It's, it's more beneficial to be able to, to be diverse with it. Mm -hmm. Yep, so here's my favorite is bison tacos. And again, in this version, we have eggs on the side because we're eating it for breakfast. So it's just kind of getting out of that box of what we think of. We think of breakfast food like, like I know growing up, I always thought of it as like cereal or Pop-Tarts or um, yeah, something like that. But you can eat a taco for breakfast, why not, you know? Um, so it doesn't have to be sweets for breakfast all the time. That's going to spike your blood sugar and drain your energy in the beginning of the day. So we love these tacos, but you can also eat them for lunch or dinner. Um, so just kind of having an open mind and experimenting. All we do is we experiment and we try to incorporate the ancestral foods as much as possible. Trust me, it's not always easy for us either. We, we have the same run into the same uh, struggles as, as anybody would as far as finding the ingredients or sometimes the ingredients can be pricey or difficult to find. Um, but just putting as much effort in as possible, understanding that it, there's nothing more important than our health, not just as individuals, but as a community, um, bad foods, processed foods and sedentary lifestyles are literally killing us at even higher rates than drug abuse and alcohol abuse are, which is pretty shocking, but it's true. And so we need to really prioritize our health, which all of you guys understand because you work in health and wellness, and that's why we really appreciate your work so much. So, so we'll be adding some more recipes up soon and, and, and even just like, like food tips and food ideas so that that way it's a little bit more loose like what we were saying before. And we do share some on our social media as well. We are on Instagram and on Facebook and YouTube and everything is just well for culture across the board. We have a YouTube channel as well. Where we share some things on there. Awesome. So I know that um, well for culture, you guys do a lot of uh, community uh, outreach. You travel around and you get to see a lot of communities and you guys get to talk about wealth and culture with other communities. Can you kind of touch base on some of the successes that you've had with um, different programs and different communities that you went to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we're hearing a lot, we always get great feedback after just doing a day of training and we, we, people will, will, will hit us up after or we run into them again later and they say, Hey, I've already, started making some changes in some of my diet and I well, especially when we spend more time going over uh, the area of foods and, and navigating the grocery store and we're, we're hearing a lot of just just, just stories from people that um, will, 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 will say that the information about um, better options and healthier options and how to navigate the grocery store has really has been impactful 
and um, some of the other organizations are, are, are even changing some of their policies in order to better accommodate a more healthier environment like work and school. And with some of the native student organizations that we've been to, they're starting to adopt some of those, some of those like policies and, and, and kind of ideas to have. Mm -hmm. I think the other success that we've had has been kind of what we've seen in terms of online interactions. We're seeing so many native um, teens and 20 year old age kind of um, getting really interested and really um, inspired by understanding that you know, as Native people, we're not doomed to have bad health. And not only that, but there's all this stuff going on with wellness in our communities. And that's way cooler and, and more fun to live that lifestyle than to go, you know, the partying route or the route of neglecting our health. Um, sometimes, um, you know, that that's the kind of feedback, feedback that we've been getting from the younger crowd. And I think that they're, of course, our future leaders, so we're really happy whenever we can kind of influence that younger crowd that way. It's always good to have those kind of positive um, role models such as yourself, you know, for the youth. I notice um, nowadays a lot of teens are kind of looking into that area, so it's always good to kind of set that platform. And, it, and it'll be a good idea to, um, well, maybe in the future if we can possibly reach out to you and then if you can reach out to any of the communities that did develop any of those policies so that way um, we can also share it with other communities so that they would you know, get more of like a broader picture of how this community did it and um, kind of go from there oh yeah definitely yeah we'd love to share that, any of that stuff awesome well once again i want to thank you guys for joining us today in our community health webinar um, today's session will be recorded and will be uploaded onto YouTube um, sometime during the day. But I want to thank you guys for joining us and taking time out of the day and also everyone else for joining us. Um, this link will be set, sent out in an email as well as the survey. So if you can, please take some time to fill out the survey. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you, thank you guys for joining us and sharing your information and your knowledge. All right. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you being here. Yes. Thank you for trusting us and thank you for all the work that each and every one of you are doing in native country. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you. All right.